and welcome back to Char Reads. This is my February review video, and as you know, we always start and end with a dog. Um, <laughs> Huxley just had a groom um, the other day and is now so smart. He looks so neat. It's kind of like an eight year old wearing a tuxedo, is how Brian described it, because he looks like a real dog, but he's also just like a little baby. Um, so I'll put you down now. I read four book books in February and I listened to six audiobooks, which I think is a pretty good month, especially considering that it's a really short month. And also I don't think I've read anything for the past like five days. <laughs> the first book I read is Severance by Ling Ma. This came out in 2018 and it is about a woman called Candace Chen. A pandemic apocalypse happens basically. Everyone gets this fungal infection called Chen fever, um, which makes you act really weirdly and then eventually die. And, <laughs> and Candace is one of the um, few survivors. We see her like three years before the pandemic um, as she first moves to New York and settles down, meets her boyfriend, and we see her around the time that the pandemic is appearing and everyone's leaving the city and she has to stay there um, for work and it all gets really dystopian really quickly. Um, and we also see her a uh, uh, month couple months later uh, where she's in a kind of like survival cult sort of thing. <laughs> really interesting to think about the comparisons between this and our pandemic because there are a lot of similarities, a lot of differences as well. Um, but yeah, I made a video about this a couple weeks ago, which I will obviously link in the description um, that goes into a bit more detail about it. But I thought it was really good. The second book I have to talk to you about um, was my book club book for this month. Um, and it was Everybody Died So I Got a Dog by Emily Dean. And I didn't like it. I really didn't like it. It frustrated me in so many ways, but the writing was funny and the pace was good so I can't give it one star. I think if I was like a fan of Emily Dean I would have loved it but we picked it on the basis of it being a memoir about grief and also about dogs and it wasn't really either of those things. But over the course of three years um, Emily's sister who was like her best friend, her mother who she was very close to and her dad who she was kind of estranged from but also um, you know shared a lot of history with obviously, uh, they all died so that happened very quickly. So the book talks about her childhood and growing up and her desire to be a dog family and get a dog. Um, but her family was always too eccentric and weird and doing different things that she never got the chance to. And then she finally gets a dog in the last like 40 pages. There's really not enough actual dog content of this. Also, shit dog mum. My friends don't really care about this, but as a dog mum, it drove me nuts when she took her eight month old puppy to a puppy class that was only for puppies up to the age of six months and lied and said that she was only four months old and that she was just really amazingly skilled and picked up loads of tricks really quickly. But no, it's because she already knew them because she's eight months old. Oh my God, what kind of person does that and then brags about it in a book? This woman has so much ego. She's both so self-centered and so insecure <laughs> where she constantly feels the need to be light-hearted and funny and it makes her completely incapable of like really really reckoning with grief like I'm sure she did personally but in the memoir she just doesn't dig down into it. If I've learned one thing from reading a lot of memoirs about grief um, you can only talk about like the deep dark places you you went um, when you let go when you let go of your the perception of yourself and she just can't do that. Also just an enormous amount of name dropping oh my god so much name dropping and also just two more complaints um <laughs> one uh she'd have these uh, make these statements as if nobody had ever experienced that emotion before like literally at some point said oh but people didn't know that on the inside i was actually really insecure and introverted and i was just making a show for the world it's like hello welcome to every single person in the world she also seemed completely oblivious of her privilege she grew up in a household that had a lot of financial difficulty and they were always living on the edge and it was really unstable but she still went to a private school and was surrounded by these like really incredible uh, like cultural icons and um, influential people that completely set her up for success and I think she's got this perspective that like oh yeah but like I had family difficulties and it's like that doesn't obviate the fact that you're extremely privileged oh okay right ran over. I'm sure if I, like, if I, she does a radio show with Frank Skinner and 
as I think most of the people that read this book are a fan of her. And if you're a fan of her and want to know more about her life, absolutely fine. If you're not a fan of her, um, then this is just sycophantic. I found it so difficult to read and I really didn't like it. The next book I have to talk about is Wintering by Catherine May. Um, I've just done a video on this so you can see that on my channel, but it's about um, winter, both the period of time and the feeling of sort of hunkering down and hibernating and it being difficult and cold and sad and dark, um, but you getting through. So it talks a lot about winter on a practical level and how like people in Norway get through the dark winters and about sea swimming that I really liked and about the passage of, of time and marking time throughout the year. But it also talked about like illness and depression and um, just difficult periods in life. Got a package and now I'm all flustered. Where were we? Wintering, yes. Um, didn't care for it that much of, as a memoir, it was quite disjointed, but the vibe, like the meandering musings of winter and how to do winter well um, was lovely. Would super recommend it, only to read in winter. No summer reading this book. The next book I have to talk about is Queenie by Candice Carthy Williams. This came out in 2019 and I wanted to read this book. It's been so hyped up. Um, I wanted to read this book so much that I put it on my Christmas wish list and forgot about it and bought myself a copy and then forgot that I bought myself a copy. So when I received it at Christmas, I was like, oh my God, I can't wait to read this. I really wanted to read this for ages. Came home and then I, it was already on my shelves and I was very confused. <laughs> anyway, um, this is about a Jamaican British 25 year old girl living in South London um, and having life shit on her for a bit. Having great friends and great family, but sort of going through a breakup and, and dealing with that by sleeping around and not really being sure what she wants from these people and from life and getting very confused and going to quite a dark place, but then coming back out of it and being renewed. Sort of a wintering of sorts. <laughs> I think this was a very accomplished book, um, technically very good. It covered such a wide range of topics and covered them all really well. And I would recommend it a lot. There were a few things that I really didn't like about it that pulled me back from super enjoying it. Like I didn't really like Queenie that much as a person <laughs> and a couple of plot points, but I made a video about this book where I talk about it more fully. So check that out if you want to hear more about it. And those are all the physical books I read this month. I also completed, um, as I started last month and talked about, the Jeeves and Worcester Audible collection by Stephen Fry. The ones I had left were Right Ho Jeeves, The Code of the Worcesters, and Joy in the Morning. And they were all just delightfully enjoyable. Apart from The Code of the Worcesters, I was sitting there doing my puzzle and I was just listening to it and I was like, this is so much fun. I am enjoying this book so much. I don't know what it was about that one that made it so much more fun <laughs> than the other ones to me. Like they were easy, comfortable, happy, funny listening. But Code of the Worcesters, I was just like absolutely riveted in this this scenario where Bertie has to steal this antique cow creamer, uh, but then he has to also not steal it and like loads of people, it's, it was just hysterical and I loved it and I felt really weirdly invested in it. The trouble with um, P.G. Woodhouse's Jeeves books, it's not the trouble, but um, they sort of, similarly to Sherlock Holmes, completely fine in isolation, but I do reference the past quite a bit, especially um, like characters returning and it's like, oh, we had that thing together. Um, and it is quite delightful listening to them chronologically um, to get that, that sense of history um, and to kind of feel clued in on this life in a very linear way. Um, but man, I kind of just want to be like, if you're going to start somewhere, start with Code of the Worcesters because <laughs> it's so good. I'm at that point now where I want to buy all of them. There's a... Uh, is it, is it reachable? Yes, it is. Arrow make these um, copies of them. Not all of the ones that are in the Audible collection, but most of them and a few extra ones are really gorgeous type and I like them a lot and I think I might just get a full set of them because I like doing that. And when I finished listening to all of them, um, I was like, okay, I need something new to listen to while I do my jigsaws and write my code. Um, and I mentioned this last time of like, I don't just want to keep listening to Harry Potter. Um, turns out I do. I just wanted to re-listen to Harry Potter. I haven't done it in like a year and a half, maybe. That's probably not true. I probably did it six months ago and didn't log it. <laughs> but, but yeah, I started listening to Harry Potter again. I'm like halfway through Goblet of Fire now. 
and I still love it and want to continue enjoying it. So glazing my eyes over, not giving JK Rowling any more money, but enjoying my audiobooks. My battery is blinking, battery's blinking. Poor little boy just wants to lie down and I just want to pick him up and cuddle him for my video. Um, oh, he's so sweet. He's like a different dog now that he's had his hair cut though. I almost don't recognize him. I can see it in his eyes, he's the same boy, but I'm not sure he loves me as much anymore. Maybe it's because I had to put him through that groom. You know, you'll be getting the snip next week. You don't know how hard that's gonna be. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you had a good February as well. What did you read? What was the best book you read in February? Um, I'd love to hear it and I will see you next time in March. Goodbye. Goodbye. Does it mean that I do this, make you wave goodbye to them? Do you mind?